So today we are going over the So What journey, um, which is for Senior Girl Scouts. And um, this journey, um, as with all of our senior level journeys, are a great way to get started on your highest awards um, because this is actually one of the prerequisites. So by getting started on this journey today, you are starting the process um, towards being able to pursue your gold award. So just keep that in mind um, that this is a really great experience um, to get you started on that highest awards process. So the So What journey is part of the It's Your Planet Love It series. Um, and it's all about food systems and land use and learning about um, what kind of food is available locally. How do we get food here from all over the world? Um, and what's our food footprint? Um, so that's a word that that's kind of new to me, um, a food print. Uh, does anybody know what that means? If you want to drop in the comments, sometimes there's a little bit of a lag. It um, takes a little while to get going, but um, but if, if you know what that means, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, but a food print is basically um, what resources and how much of those resources are used to get the food from where it started to your table. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera here and we're gonna get started uh, on figuring out what my food print is. And if you guys happen to have any food um, with you today um, in your kitchen that you can easily look up, um, that's something that you guys can do to participate if you'd like. Um, but I've got a few things prepared here. All right. So, got a few things in my kitchen. Okay, so we're gonna start with this avocado here and I'm just gonna grab my notes real quick so I don't forget everything. So we're gonna start with this avocado. Where do you guys think this came from? Do you think that they grow avocados in Ohio? Okay, well while those comments are rolling in, I'm just gonna say that our weather here is probably not great. Um, for avocado growing. I bet you could probably grow one indoors. Um, that would probably take a lot of heat to do. Um, I don't know, I've never tried it, but on a mass scale where you, where they're gonna send these to supermarkets, um, Ohio is not the best place to grow an avocado. Um, so, um, this one actually came from Mexico, and as I was doing research for this, um, I found out that actually um, most avocados um, that we eat in the U.S. either come from California or from Mexico, where the weather is a little bit warmer um, and it's just a better climate to produce those. Um, and California and Mexico are both pretty far from Ohio, so um, you know how many miles is that? I think you know from most parts of California, it's at least two thousand miles. Um, just to get an avocado here. So, um, and they have to transport them in those big semi trucks, um, which I found out actually only get like six miles to the gallon. Um, so we're talking hundreds of gallons of gasoline um, just to bring me this avocado that I love so much. So um, I did find out that you can actually regrow avocados from the seeds. So that's one way that we can actually lower our food print. Um, we are gonna just play a little game here. So um, part of this activity is kind of grading our food um, on its food print. So um, we've got a one for anything that was produce in your local region or your community. So um, anything here that I have here that's made in Ohio or the surrounding area, because we're not really too far from Kentucky or Indiana. So um, those are also kind of considered local too. So two is for anything that was um, made in the United States. So if my avocado came from California, then it would get a two, but it came from Mexico. So it actually gets a three, which is um, for anything that was imported um, internationally. So this is definitely like a really simple way of uh, figuring out your food print. So there are a ton of websites out there where you can actually figure out the food mileage and what the 
footprint of your um, consumption habits are and you can just enter the food but for today we're just going to do a really simple version of this. All right, so I've got a few things here. So I've got olive oil. So um, this is really similar to um, the avocado in that Ohio is definitely not a place where we grow a lot of olives. So um, this is definitely more for like a Mediterranean climate um, where it is warmer um, year round. So they don't get um, a whole lot of winters um, or at least not as bad as we do here in Ohio, they're not getting that um, over in Italy where this all the olives actually came from. But um, they actually had to make a stop on the way from Italy to my table, um, a couple stops. So one thing that I've learned throughout this process um, a little bit more about is that um, your food not only is grown somewhere, but a company is probably going to be buying those materials such as your olives um, or uh, whatever else needs, you know, the ingredients that are going into your different foods. Um, and then they're going to make that food. So if it's a processed thing like your frozen pizza, they've got a lot of ingredients that they're going to have to buy from all over the world. Um, and um, with that, um, it ends up increasing your food print by um, by quite a bit. So um, this probably came from Italy. Uh, this is definitely where that came from. But like I said, it had to make a stop um, in a um, place where they would actually make it into olive oil because this wasn't imported direct it directly from Italy. It was actually um, made a stop in Seattle, Washington, where um, it was made and then distributed um, out to Cincinnati. So it went all the way from Italy to Seattle, Washington, and then to Cincinnati. So um, that definitely gets a three, but maybe like a four or five because that's pretty far. Um, Okay, so got a couple more things. So uh, we've got some cheese here and it says that it was distributed in Cincinnati, Ohio. So just looking at that city name, you think, okay, well maybe this is local because it says Cincinnati, Ohio, but do we think that the cows um, that made the milk that went uh, into this cheese all came from Cincinnati. So uh, feel free to drop in the comments if you have answers to any of these questions. Um, but when I did some research, I actually found out that, um, you know, Ohio, while there's probably some dairy farming happening, that's not really where it's happening on a massive scale. So, um, and it's really hard to find if you're researching um, from the distribution center standpoint, like where are they getting all their materials? Well, they're not always going to tell you because probably they came from a bunch of different places. So um, maybe they got milk from Wisconsin and maybe um, some from, you know, Michigan or um, Wyoming. I don't really know, um, but it could have come from several different places. So we don't really know. Um, with this one, it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm going to give it a two because it came from somewhere in the U.S. most likely. All right, so got a couple more, um, a couple more items here. So this one um, is coffee, um, which was roasted here in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, but it's actually um, Colombian coffee. So it came from the country, Colombia. Um, and so that one is definitely going to get a three. So, um, here we go. Oh, it's a little hard to see. It's kind of shiny, uh, lettering that I have here. So, all right. So, you know, most of the food that I have in my kitchen, um, is getting a two or a three here. I also brought out some fish sauce. So if you were watching us last week, um, on Friday last week, I made some, delicious ginger chicken for the New Cuisines badge, and um, and I use fish sauce, um, which actually um, comes from, I believe, China. Um, yes, uh, no, this one came from Hong Kong, so um, pretty close to China. So that's pretty far. Um, when I went to China a year ago, um, it took 
several flights and um, almost a day of travel to get there. So it's pretty far. That's definitely getting a three. So, um, you know, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I didn't really have anything that I could point um, toward being from, you know, in this local region of of Ohio. So, um, you know, that's something that uh, that I'm going to need to look at um, as I uh, lower my own food print. But, um, you know, there's definitely reasons why um, we don't always have food um, that is made locally. Can anybody think of reasons um, why you'd buy food from uh, maybe imported somewhere uh, versus just buying everything that is available to you locally. If anybody can think of why, um, feel free to drop that in the comments. All right, it always takes a little bit to get those comments rolling in. So um, basically, um, you know, we live in a place where, where there's winter, so we don't grow food year round here. Um, so in Ohio, it, it can definitely be um, tougher to get local food year round. So that is one reason why I don't always buy um, local food. So um, now if you live in California or um, a warmer climate, you might actually have access to local foods um, a lot more um, than we might in a colder climate, um, such as the Northeast or the Midwest. So um, it really depends on where you live. Um, and, you know, definitely drop in the comments if you guys have any uh, particular local foods that you guys like um, that, you know, that you wouldn't maybe get anywhere else. Um, I know in Ohio, we, we do grow a lot of produce. Um, I'm definitely starting a garden, so I want to show you guys um, just one thing that I've been doing to kind of reduce my uh, food print over here. So I'll be right back. Just going to grab my, my little plants here. So, um, so one thing that you can do um, when local produce isn't necessarily available all the time is you can actually grow um, food in your home. So um, we will be starting a vegetable garden this summer, but before we can do that, um, I actually was able to um, start my own little window garden. And this one was really cool. So does anybody know what these are? Um, they are green onions. Um, and I actually bought these from a supermarket um, and I just replanted them when I was done with them. So what you do with this is you pretty much just um, cut off about an inch um, of the green onion and then you just replant it um, in soil and they come back if you water them every day. So, and I'm also trying to make my cilantro here last a little longer because I also heard you can actually regrow that in water too. So. Um, got some options here for how you can um, make um, make your food print a little bit lower. And um, while these definitely didn't originate in Cincinnati, we, um, they probably also came from Mexico. Um, we actually were able to um, get a little bit more mileage out of um, those green onions that I bought. So I'm just going to put these aside. All right, and see if comments have rolled in. All right. So, um, get started here. So, okay. So definitely, um, at home, take a look at what's in your kitchen. Give, uh, some of those foods a one, a two, or a three, um, so that you kind of know what that food print is. Um, and it really helps to kind of look up how many miles, um, is it from one place to another? So um, there was uh, something I was making last week too, also on the New Cuisines badge, um, that uh, required a specific type of berry from the Pacific Northwest, um, which I calculated that mileage um, to be about 2,500 miles um, that it had to travel um, from the Northwest to get here. So, and then think about that like as, um, you know, not only are, is that gas mileage, but, um, you know, that food also had packaging and maybe that packaging had to travel from one place to another to get to that distribution center where it was packaged and then, and then sent out to, um, to the different supermarkets. Also think about how far 
is your local supermarket. Do you have to drive, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles to get to your local supermarket? Now, most of my stuff that I have here, um, I bought from a local store that's just a couple miles away, but there's certain items maybe once in a while that I wanna go to like a specialty store for. So for example, this fish sauce here, um, I got from a store, a little um, international supermarket um, that we have here in Cincinnati, but it's kind of far, it's like a, a half hour away. So with that one, that even increases my food print even more because I had to drive really far to get to that. So um, as you can see, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of energy um, and a lot of resources to, um, to get food to our table um, that is not, um, produced locally in your community. All right, so, and like I said too, um, if you were to eat local food year round in certain communities, you'd probably not have a lot um, of options if you were to just eat local year round. So it's not necessarily feasible for everybody to do this all the time, but we can definitely work together um, and reduce that food print by making different choices and um and making sure that we um are finding foods that are local when when available um okay so that just kind of leads us into the next activity um which is the food forage so um this is an activity that you can actually find on your volunteer toolkit if you add the so what journey to your year plan um it comes up under the second meeting plan so um definitely uh check that out so this activity was meant for girls to go out into different types of markets um and find what's available to them in their community um and what um what the different markets sell um and you know what the pricing is and really just get a feel for what is available in their community right now that's not really possible because we are recommending that girls not go to the grocery store for this activity right now because we are trying to stay distant from one another and um, many stores um, across our country right now are actually limiting the number of people uh, that can actually go into the store at a time. So we're not gonna go to the grocery stores um, right now, but you can actually adapt this activity to your home. So, oh no. Looks like we've got a few comments in here. Awesome, okay. Um, all right, so um, it looks like we had a question. Um, what is so harmful about a food print? Well, um, let's talk about that for a second. So um, definitely, uh, you know, when we talk about gas mileage um, for those semi trucks, especially, um, you know, if you're getting six miles to the gallon and have to drive 2,500 miles to get my food to me um, or more, that is a lot of um, carbon emissions into our environment. So a lot of greenhouse gases um, that could potentially be avoided if we chose different foods um, that were more local and had less of a food print. So thanks for that question, Tanya. Um, so uh, as far as the food forage activity, we're going to adapt this a little bit to um, to our own community so um, and to our current circumstances. So, um, for example, um, you know, definitely this is a great idea to just take to your next um, troop meeting. So if you guys are having a Zoom meeting, definitely, um, you know, talk to each other about what types of different supermarkets your family shops at or, um, you know, do they maybe go to the farmer's market locally? Do they go to um, a food co-op? Do you have one of those in your community? I have yet to find a food co-op um, nearby my home, but uh, I know a lot of communities have those. Um, so with the supermarkets, typically they are a little bit um, more of like a mix between organic and non-organic food. Um, they typically have kind of average prices on a lot of things, um, and they're gonna be carrying things from all over the place. So I know that a lot of supermarkets are trying to um, carry more local food when possible, when it's in season. Um, and I know that um, they also are trying to appeal to those who um, just want 
you know, the cheap food or don't really care where it comes from. So you're going to see things for, from all over there. Um, but has anybody ever been to a farmer's market? And if so, just drop in the comments um, what kind of food you have seen at a farmer's market. Oh, and it looks like Darla says you can regrow garlic, celery, lettuce, and more the same way. That's awesome. Thank you, Darla. That's great. I'm going to have to try that. I'm really excited to try to regrow garlic. Okay. Looks like we've got a few new comments in here. All right. So... Looks like Roger's got a farmer's market near him and it's all fresh food. Christine says um, there's lots of fresh produce and coffee, fruits and vegetables, tomatoes, lettuce. All right, great answers, you guys. Um, fresh fruit and vegetables, fresh bread, honey. Oh yeah, that's great. Squash, kombucha, um, which is a type of tea. Um, vegetables, cheese, and milk. Um, this is great. Things that are all grown locally. So what a farmer's market is, if you haven't heard of it, is it's basically a um, place where local growers can um, sell all of their food. So if you're looking for local food and to reduce that food print, definitely um, check out your local farmer's market. But just know that that's not always um, going to be the most available thing because remember it also depends on the season and it depends on um, you know what's available what are they growing locally and a lot of farmers markets don't uh, don't run every single day so those um, typically are once a week or once every other week depending on what community you live in um, there are some farmers markets, um, in you know, some cities just have a, a ton of farmers markets and, um, you know, maybe you can find one to go to every day of the week if you wanted, but um, but most communities, it's it's just one or two. Oh, I'm seeing Jackie says eggs, honey, and avocados and oranges. Oh, nice. that was amazing. And now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> All right. All right, so it looks like, um, so we've kind of established that uh, farmer's markets typically have a lot of local food. Um, has anybody ever heard of a food co-op or been to one? So that's another type of um, market where you can buy food. Um, like I said, we don't really have those uh, too much in Cincinnati, but um, if somebody knows of one, let me know. Uh, but so typically those places um, have more um, local and organic options, but you know, really depending on the food co-op, it can be quite a mix. Um, and, you know, sometimes they're a little bit more expensive, um, definitely buying, um, buying organic food definitely is a little bit more expensive. Um, does anybody know why organic food might be more expensive um, than conventional food? And if you do, um, feel free to drop that in the comments. Um, but there's actually uh, something interesting about food co-ops is that they're often nonprofit organizations and they'll actually let you volunteer for a few hours a week um, to get a discount on food. So um, I've seen some places that do that. Um, you also have some maybe high end grocery stores um, that maybe offer more specialty foods, more prepared foods, things that are prepared ahead of time. Um, so those are another option. So um, what I'm encouraging you all to do is to research uh, what types of stores are available in your community. Ask your troop um, and maybe other adults in your community um, that you know and are connected with. Um, where do they shop? and what kind of foods are available there, and then really have that guide um, you in this. Um, look at the food that you have in your kitchen and see how um, how your food print stacks up maybe to, you know, what's available in your community. Um, are there things that you guys can do to maybe reduce that foot print. Um, maybe that means starting a vegetable garden and growing some of your own food. Maybe that means um, checking out the local farmer's market when it's safe to do so. Um, maybe that just means, um, you know, finding 
finding a local food co-op um, or whatever that means to you really um, and doing that research um, which you know you guys will have to do on your own uh, to finish this activity but definitely look into that and uh, really start diving into your food print um, and, and learn about your community. So um, 